We have a special offer for our Munch Bunch listeners. To book a virtual consult with Megan, she's offering a discount of $25 off. Just email her, Megan, at nwmyofunctionaltherapy.com or through her website, www.orofacial-myology.com. To book a virtual consult with Kimmy for the $25 off, email her mouthmusclememory at outlook.com or through the website www.mouthmusclememory.com. Now on to the episode. Hey everybody, welcome to the Munch Bunch Mile podcast. This is Kimmy Nishimoto with Megan Vanoy, and today we have a powerhouse in the house. Woohoo! <laughs> Besides <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> we have Dr. Priya Mystery, the TMJ doc. Mm-hmm. And she's going to talk to us about all things TMJ today. So Priya, maybe just give us a little short bit of who you are, and then we'll sure. just go from there. Sure, sure. So I'm a general dentist. I graduated in 2007. And I worked as a general dentist doing general dentist things till about 2018. And that's when I met my mentor, who kind of schooled me and took me on as his kind of apprentice. Uh, He taught me about the TMJ work that he sort of dedicated his life to. So he was the TMJ guy TMJ guy in this area. So I'm in the Pacific Northwest and his practice was in Portland, Oregon, which I recently moved the practice. I bought it and moved it to Vancouver, Washington, about 10 miles north um, just last year. So I started working with him and I was just so inspired by what he was doing. He was changing people's lives. He was helping them to feel better and get out of pain and dysfunction. And so I was hooked from the first day I started observing him and shadowing him. And then um, we we had such, just such a great working relationship. And so I bought the practice and moved it here closer to my home. And here we are now. So it's full-time TMJ work. We don't do any general dentistry here. And that's, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, and just like real quick, you guys, so TMJ, temporal mandibular joint, your jaw joint, just in case anybody, and you know, doesn't know the full slang. I got asked that the other day and I kind of forgot that, you know, sometimes we have to <laughs> clarify that for people. So um, yeah. And I found uh, Priya when I was just looking for more providers in the Portland area, I had reached out to her um, and I got to go to her new office and open house. It was it two weeks ago now. And it's gorgeous. You guys, I'm like, I have like <laughs> office envy. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah. it. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not going to fight you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's like this, go- like this gorgeous color. What, what do we call it? Mauve? Is that? Yeah, it's like is, this. Like mauve sounds so dated. So I almost want to say like dusty rose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dusty rose. I love that. I love dusty rose. No. Yeah. It's so, it's awesome. Um, it's so great to have more and more people in the Portland area too, because over the past um, few years, I've been feeling like an island. So I like just got jumped at the chance once I got to meet Priya and um, excited to keep working with her. So uh, will you talk to us a little bit more about kind of what specifically that TMJ work really means? Because it's so complex and I know like we could get really high level on it, but um, you know, it's a really confusing joint. Uh, pain is a huge piece of the puzzle. So we break it down for us just a little bit more about really like the nitty gritty. Yeah. So a lot of people are walking around with TMJD, TMJ disorder without even maybe realizing it because many people think that to have a, an issue with the, with the TMJs, with the, with this whole system in general, and I'm pointing to the jaw, head and neck, for those of you that might just be listening, um, that you have to have jaw joint noises. You have to have clicking. You have to have popping. You have to have crackling. You have to have, you know, your jaw getting stuck. And many people are like, I don't have that. I have headaches and jaw pain and, or headaches and neck pain. And that's, that's not the jaw. However, it very well could be. And so that's kind of the tricky part is to figure out what kind of what the source of the discomfort is, what the source of the pain or dysfunction is. And so we, the way that we refer to things at our office is we call problems within the joint as like TMJ issues. And so those will manifest as clicking, popping, or crackling noises or episodes of the jaw locking or kind of catching, getting stuck for a few moments. TMD, temporomandibular disorder, 
or dysfunction. We recognize that as being all about the muscles. So when the muscles of the head, neck, and jaw go into spasm or become dysfunctional, they can get trapped in this chronic pain and spasm cycle that's incredibly painful. And it can lead to number one is headaches. So many people wake up with headaches or their headaches come on later during the day. Um, I've, I've really seen every single variety or they just have no general pattern to them. But either which way headaches, whether they originate at the base of the skull, the temples, if they come from the jaw and kind of radiate upwards, many headaches can be related back to these dysfunctional muscles of the head, neck and jaw. The second symptom that manifests is any sort of ear related concerns. Mm -hmm. So that can be like sharp or dull ear pain. It can be stuffy ears, like feeling like you're in an airplane or your ears feel clogged, uh, hearing loss, tinnitus, um, lots of different ear related concerns can kind of come along with that. And then jaw pain, neck pain, pain behind the eye or eye strain, shoulder mm. pain. There's oh, so many. Yes. That's <laughs> it. That's one I haven't heard of before. The eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's just so many things that can come along with TMD, even numbness or tingling in the face or in the extremities and the fingertips. Mm. Oh, so yeah. many things can come along with that. And so if the jaw joint has never made any noises, if it's never clicked, it's never popped, but all these other things have happened. Many people just go on this crazy journey. They go to the ENT, they go to a neurologist, they go to their primary care physician, they go to, you know, everywhere. And they're just not really getting answers or they're being put on strong pain medications like gabapentin and nothing against medication, but it like, it sort of just masks the symptoms, but doesn't treat those dysfunctional muscles. If that isn't it, it, like the case, like if it is originating from those dysfunctional muscles, ultimately that's not the, it's not treating the muscles. It's masking the pain when you go about it that way. And so mm -hmm. TMJ, TMD, it can be very confusing for the people that are going through it as well as practitioners that are trying to diagnose it. And so, right. I would say, yeah, in the medical community, the, the people that recognize it like almost immediately is a lot of ENTs, ear, nose and throat doctors, because people come in with sharp ear pain and nothing's wrong with their ear yeah. <laughs> or they come in. Yeah. They think they have an ear infection and nothing's going on with the ear. So uh, we do have ENTs that refer to us, but we don't really see a lot of the other medical community referring to us. And I would love if I could like bring awareness to that, but I feel like I'm yeah. veered way off of the question. So I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's no, you're dead on, on the question, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, and, and you know, with us, like, I am sure Kimmy can speak to this too, but like, I have had so many patients that have been down all of these rabbit holes. They've spent, you know, 10, 12, 13 years trying to figure out their pain. They've been to this doctor. They've been to that doctor. They've poured tens of thousands of dollars into, you know, this silver bullet and that, and this, until they finally find, you know, someone like you, or, you know, or, you know, they find me and then I find somebody like you, um, to really direct them. And they're like, seriously, like I could have saved all this time and effort and energy and money and given it to where, like help myself in these ways. So I do think it's important to have those conversations too, and, you know, have those resources out there. So, which is that kind of part of why you started your YouTube channel too, to get that awareness out? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, um, it was right after quarantine ended where my mentor was, you know, we were a little worried about the business and like, are we going to be able to stay afloat? And people are staying in their homes. They're afraid to go outside right now. And are they even going to come into the office? And so he, his idea was, you know, Let's all think of ways that we can, you know, just spread awareness about our office, what we do, what we can offer people. And so he said, you know, I want everyone to come up with an idea. And I was sitting there twiddling my thumbs like, I don't know. So I thought, what do I like to do? Well, I like to talk. If you can't tell. <laughs> and, <laughs> I, <too>. I, <laughs> and I like to I like to create content. And I like to educate. So I thought, why don't I create content for people in pain for our patient base? And I created a few videos for like dentists and such, but so many dentists don't even want to touch TM, TMJ, TMD with their mm -mm. pinky toe. Like they're just, they're like, nope, I'm going to find a specialist or a, mm -hmm. you know, a TMJ person in my area and refer. Mm -hmm. 
So um, then I started creating content. If you watch my videos, the first few are so awkward. So feel free to make fun <laughs> of me and laugh. Um, it's really hard to talk to a camera. Yeah, <laughs> but, it is. It is. <laughs> but yeah, no, it kind of took off. Like, it, I mean, obviously, I don't have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but enough that, you know, we have people coming in here who have found us on YouTube and I'm able to help them. And that's mm -hmm. important because even if it's only one person that finds me that way, that's great. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I've created more and more and more videos. I think there's probably over a hundred on there now on impressive ton. Thank you yeah. on tons of stuff from like the, all the noises in the jaw joints, what they mean. And there's a lot of um, illustrations, diagrams, or animations to go along with what I'm saying. So it's not just a talking head. There's a lot to go along <laughs> with it so that people can learn all. Most of us are visual learners. Um, and then there's also some videos dedicated to just what we talked about, where a lot of the times the dysfunction can be pain and it's not necessarily noises in the joints. Um, there's a lot on what is a tongue tie? What is myofunctional therapy? You know, there's there, there's the, the I try to make a series of videos kind of connecting tongue tie with how that can lead to facial development, airway development clenching, grinding, and then TMJ issues, because mm -hmm. the vast majority of my patients, that's the path that they mm -hmm. that brought them yeah. to me. And so uh, there's tons of information on there. So many people have gone down the, the kind of rabbit hole of watching my videos, and then they reach out to me and um, they either come see me in my office, or we do a zoom meeting or whatever it may be, but it's proven to be people are finding it very helpful and informative. And there's even some like, muscle releases where I show people how to kind of relieve pain from the comfort of their own homes, which was important during COVID. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Mm -hmm. So Priya, in your office, what sort of modalities and treatments do you do? Like, do you do splinting? Do you do expansion? Do you do like oil appliances? Like what is your bread and butter? Yeah, so the TMJ world like pretty much recognizes that there's two phases of TMJ treatment. And the first phase is always bringing function back to the muscles. So getting them out of that dysfunctional, spastic, painful state and bringing function back to the joints. Once that's done and people are out of pain, then phase two is bringing the teeth or expanding the arches and then bringing the teeth to fit that position that you determine um, is good for the muscles and the joints in phase one. Mm -hmm. So I only do phase one treatment. So I do the muscles and the joints. And then many of my patients don't want to pursue phase two treatment. I'll circle back around to, to why in just a moment. And so for phase one treatment, what we do is we offer orthotics. So we, um, very different from a dental night guard, a dental night guard is wonderful at protecting the teeth from the forces of clenching and grinding, but it does not treat the muscles and joints. Mm. So what we do, yeah, is we measure where the muscles are the most relaxed and where the joints are aligned and decompressed. And we build a daytime and nighttime orthotic to hold the jaw in that very specific position. And when the jaw is held in a good position, when the muscles are held in their happy place for a significant amount of time, good things tend to happen. We see pain go down pretty drastically within a month, month and a half. Wow. And yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. And so in addition to that, so we have the orthotics, um, we do TENS therapy. So that's mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. yeah, the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. And that really helps flush the muscles out. So it takes the toxic stuff out of the muscles and brings the good stuff in. Um, it blocks the pain. It kind of produces endorphins too. So that will kind of lower our um, sensitivity to pain and such. And so we use a lot of TENS therapy. We do myofascial release and we do a very subtle but very technique sensitive jaw manipulation that helps my patients who are clicking and popping or whose jaws are actually locked closed, which is super painful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so in addition to that, we see most of my patients every two to three weeks. And at those appointments, we do all of that. So we do the myofascial release. We do craniosacral work here too. Mm. We, yeah, <laughs> we manipulate the jaw. And then this is a super important part of each appointment. We adjust the orthotics because they cannot change, but each person can. And as the muscles start to snap out of that dysfunctional state, as the joints start to um, get back to function, the clicking and popping is going down. People are able to open more. We have to adjust the orthotics to keep up with and support the body's changes. 
So it's not giving someone orthotics and being like, bye, (laughs) we have to see them every two to three weeks. And so people are usually in treatment for four to six months. Mm -hmm. Um, Some people fly through it and they're out of here within three months. Other people, it can take 10 months. And so it's really hard to say how quickly the body will respond. But I would say we have like a 90% success rate. And by the time we're done, um, our patients are not dependent on the daytime orthotic at all. So that means that if they take the daytime one out, their pain doesn't just come back right away. So that's Mm -hmm. good. But a lot of them are dependent on the nighttime one. And so that means they have to wear that every night before they go to sleep and seven or eight consecutive hours of wearing that kind of sets them up for success the next day and so on and so forth to take the daytime one or the nighttime one away. Patients would have to pursue phase two, which is expansion or moving the teeth to that neutral happy position that we determine in phase one. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my patients don't want to do that. Like a lot of my patients don't want braces. They don't want expanders. They don't want, we have a few that do. So I don't really offer any of that right now because I'm so busy as it is with just treating phase one. Right. Um, but eventually, I mean, I have all these plans and goals and I just feel like there's not enough hours in the day because eventually no. <laughs> I would like to offer that to patients that want it. And many of my patients would benefit from expansion. Many of them would benefit from so many other things that they do in phase two. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's, objectively like super expensive to do the phase two especially Mm -hmm. if they opt for no ortho but they want to do full mouth crowns yeah Mm -hmm. gets super super pricey so it's understandable yeah many of them just don't want to do that and they're so happy because i get the the patients that are in the most pain right like i'm one of the tmj people in the area and so they want to be out of pain. Like that is their number one goal. They want to be able to chew. They want to be able to yawn. They want to be able to speak. They want to, you know, and so once they're there, they're thrilled. Right. (laughs) You know? And so, yeah, yeah, it's so true. And you know, this is something that we keep that we run into a lot too, of finding that sweet spot of getting functional, getting out of pain, you know, addressing as many things as we can, but also being conscious and aware of what, you know, people are able to dedicate their time to what they're able to dedicate their finances to Mm -hmm. um, and trying to help them find that, that middle ground and that happy, that happy meeting, that happy place for themselves too. So I think it's so cool and so beneficial that it doesn't have to be everything in the kitchen sink when it comes to the pain and when it comes to really helping them find that stability Um, and then really helping them plan for the future around that. And I think that's, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I really enjoy what I do. It's, it's been really, really gratifying. I love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's a beautiful thing when you can help people like not be in severe pain. It's Mm -hmm. such a drag to be in pain. (laughs) Yeah. It really sucks. Like nobody wants it. <laughs> nobody wants it. No. So I have a I have a, a little question for you, Dr. Priya. So people that have had premolar extractions, usually maxillary is uh, the arch is much smaller and the joint space is tiny. So someone like me, where my jaw has to, it feels like it dislocates forward to open all the way and then it has mm. to go back. Mm. What's going on there? So I'll show you. Yeah. Do you feel like, do you have joint noises too? I can't hear. Um, not a lot of noises, but it does like deviate. And sometimes yeah. it, it will pull one way or the other, just depending on my head position. It's really weird. <laughs> so you did have the premolar extraction. I did. Right? Yeah. Okay, just yeah. to clarify. Yeah, I did too. And oh, I did, did you? Like, yeah, okay. I did too. And and so I feel like for, for people that went through that type of ortho like us, we didn't really grow to like, we weren't allowed to grow to our, I, not we weren't allowed to, we didn't develop to our ideal right. genetic potential. That's why everything was crowded, right? right. Mm-hmm. And so our orthodontists were, thought they were doing the best for us. They pulled mm-hmm. those teeth and they sort of pulled everything back. But the muscles, their correct resting length, where they are the happiest is kind of, it's forward. Mm-hmm. And, and so when our jaw is forward, things tend to feel better. And so I don't know if you do this, Kimmy, but I all day, and I didn't realize I was doing this until I started working with my mentor. I posture my jaw forward. So I'm sitting like this mm-hmm. all day because it feels better intuitively. Mm-hmm. So I'm not quite sure that might tie into what's happening when you, when you open 
and like mm-hmm. you said, it, it kind of repositions forward. Mm-hmm. It probably feels better to open that way, just sort of subconsciously. Yeah, it feels like it's like clunking around up in there. And, I, and it I could just, be. I try to like use my muscles to open it properly and I relax and I massage them like every day, yeah. but it's almost like the bone structure doesn't want to be. Yeah. In the yeah, right it's position. probably things are so compressed and then the muscles yeah. around there just might be constricted and tight. And so when I open, I always deflect over to my right. Like that's just mm-hmm. my opening. And I think- mm-hmm. You know, if if I had developed to where everything was nice and wide and could, you know, all our teeth could be in there, including the wisdom teeth, like I probably wouldn't open like that, but we'll never know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah. when you come when you come up here on your road trip, Kimmy, maybe we'll have to road trip over to Dr. King's office. And- <laughs> yes, come see it. <laughs> yeah, it's a real fun time on vacation, right? <laughs> So when people open like that and they have that deviation and the pop, yeah. does that contribute to wear on the condyle mm-hmm. of the it mandible? It, yeah, it can. And it can contribute to wear on the disc in oh. between the bony components of the joints. It can, yeah, it can contribute to wear on all of it. And so that's where, you know, having my patients leave here where they're sort of dependent on the nighttime orthotic, it's actually an advantage because every night that they wear it, it decompresses the joints. So it creates joint space just because they're wearing that. Oh, and that's that so joint, cool. Yeah. So that joint space that they have while they're sleeping, it's nice because things aren't like rubbing against each other. Things aren't being, you know, irritated for that entire seven or eight hours at night or, or so. And I try to train a lot of my patients not to clench or grind during the day. Yeah. Like, I'm just kind of hard, but mm-hmm. so we try to get those joints some relief during the day too. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of where, you know, like working with the myofunctional therapist and, you know, kind of where you and I, we go hand in hand is we can help them with the, that awareness and that, that clenching and grinding and mm-hmm. um, work, work alongside of those things too, which is, mm-hmm. you know which is our kind of piece, our little piece of the pie anyways. So, mm-hmm. um, cause that is, I mean, that's a huge, you know, that's a huge complaint uh, from all of our, you know, like my patients is they all clench and grind and they don't know how to stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they I just bet. can't stop themselves. <laughs> yeah. And like so, so many people are just sort of limited. They limit themselves because they say, well, it's just a habit. I can't stop. And I'm like, well, you can, you can stop during the day. It'll mm-hmm. take some work but you can stop. Like it'll take some, some effort and work and time, but you can definitely stop. So I'm always very encouraging to my patients who think that they just can't stop during the day. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I actually have a, a coworker um, who's been temping in the dental office I was working at and she was like taking ibuprofen and Tylenol every single day. And I'm like, girl, what is going on with you? And she's like, my jaw hurts so bad all day, every day. And I was like, where's your tongue at? <laughs> Let me yeah. look in your mouth. <laughs> What's going on in there? And right. She was jutting her jaw forward uh-huh. and then pulling her tongue back towards her throat Oy. as she Oof. cleaned. And I'm like, honey, no wonder your jaw hurts. That's a horribly dysfunctional movement. Like, uh-huh. stop it. Uh-huh. Put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, lips yeah. together and separate your teeth. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Um, and she just texted me the other day that she's like, I haven't had to take ibuprofen or Tylenol all week. That's amazing. It's amazing. Amazing. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's altering those, those habits can, it's mind blowing what it can do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It really, it's really interesting. And that's kind of what got me in my, like learning about Mayo and like way back, like 2012, my very first office I ever worked at, I was like the queen of like playing with my lingual anterior um, retainer and I would just push mm-hmm. my tongue against there all day long mm-hmm. and I clean teeth. And then I'd be like, man, why does like my occipital, like, and why did my head hurt so bad mm-hmm. at the end of every single day? And like the doctor I was working for at the time, um, he's kind of an airway bioblock guy. And he asked, that's what he asked me. He's like, well, where's your tongue at? And I was like, in my mouth like what <laughs> excuse me what where's <laughs> yours <laughs> yeah like, this seems like mildly inappropriate um and then like you know and then it was like well did you know the tongue's supposed to be you know behind your top front teeth and I was like excuse me like 
my tongue has never even like met the roof of my mouth. And, <laughs> um, you know, tongue tie is a part of my journey. You guys all know that. But um, I also wonder too, because I had the old school rapid palatal expander that I would just crank it. I like had like a big old my- Michael Strahan gap between my teeth. Mm. And I wonder if I just like never put my tongue up there because I always like had that expander in and then just kind of stayed there ever since because nobody told me otherwise but mm-hmm. yeah tmj headaches those were a huge part of my journey that between you know myo sleep you know tongue tie release that i've been able to really help resolve but mm-hmm. um you know we're gonna we're gonna be coming up to your office myself and of course isabel um, mm-hmm. for some cranial sacral work because i still feel like there's we're not quite there right like mm-hmm. there's still those things there's still those times because i you know i have you know 30 whatever you have, however many years you want to call it of, uh, you know, habits of, <laughs> of doing it this way. And, uh, so I think that's going to be really cool for us. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I feel, I feel the same way because, um, my daughter and I are working with you, Megan, for yeah. our myofunctional <laughs> therapy and our tongue ties. And we're so excited mm-hmm. to get going on this journey. And, and, you know, I really struggled to breastfeed both my children and I had no awareness of any of this and they're both tongue tied and they both got it from me. And, um, I really beat myself up about it. I still kind of do, you know, but you know, oh. it is what it is. And it's not uh, your fault. It's a genetic trait. I know. Well, you know. We know that in our heads, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then when it comes time, yeah, we know that in our heads, but it's, <laughs> it's hard when you're a mom. Right. And so mm-hmm. I'm excited to get my daughter on this journey. I'm excited to be on it for myself too. And it'll be fun to do that stuff together with her. So are you going to yeah. get your tongue tie release? Yeah, I need to. Oh, awesome. I have my tie is like, is worse than my daughter's. My daughter had hers released when she got her adenoids out with Dr. Gehari. Mm. And then we did some myo before and after, but she was just so young mm-hmm. that it, I, I didn't know if she needed a revision, but Megan's thinking maybe not. If she just goes through the myo, she might be where she needs to be. So we'll mm-hmm. see. Yeah. We're, we're at the beginning of our journey. So we're going to kind of play it by ear and look at all the functional pieces as we go for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Speaking yeah. of inappropriate tongue comments, as soon as you said that, I was like, I want to see. <laughs> no, do you want to? Like, Can I see your mouth? <laughs> yes, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, she's got that Eiffel Tower. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh. Let's yeah. see your open wide and reach up. Oh, yeah, just your tongue to spot, your end spot, just the tip. Mm-hmm. Just the tip. God, I can't even do that. That's because we wore you out earlier. Beauty yeah. of Maya. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, the floor of my mouth is and it wants to curl forward. Yeah. yeah the yeah. floor of my mouth. Yeah. The, my tongue curls mm-hmm. forward. The floor of my mouth is lifting. Like mm-hmm. I've never been able to do that. Like taco tongue thing. I just mm-hmm. thought that yeah. some people couldn't do it, but I, I guess I just never thought about it. So, yeah. So what yeah. are your symptoms Priya? So I have this spot in my trapezius that hates me. It's just a big knot. And my, like from there all the way up, my neck is just so tight and you know I wear my orthotic every night I work with um, my craniosacral therapist that I have here she's wonderful and she helps loosen it up but I've had this since I was like 11 I mean it's not gonna go away quickly and so that's probably my main thing and Mm -hmm. so I just um I kind of wanted to do it just to see once we're done with the release and all the you know the post-release myofunctional work what's going to happen to that because I've Mm -hmm. just heard of so many people say that once they get the tongue tie released and they, they do the myo, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, they feel releases in other parts of their body, Mm -hmm. you know, because everything's connected with the fascia. And so for me, I'm just very curious and it's, it's going to be a fun journey for me to document, which Megan's given me permission to do so (laughs) and share with, you know, my, the people that follow me on social media. So I have a couple reasons I'm doing it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like, I've had some patients like this was, this was not my experience, but I've had a couple of patients who've like felt it all the way down to their toes. Kimmy can speak to her own experience, but I know Kimmy, you had quite the like response. Yeah. Um, I don't grind my teeth. I stopped gasping and choking. Um, I had a weird thing where I was the, the, was it called a surgical patient for like a class of dentists? So they had a camera in there over my face while they did it. And then 28 doctors put their tongue fingers in my tongue hole <laughs> to feel <laughs> if the restrictions were gone. So that was sore. 
<laughs> well, um, did, didn't you feel some like release kind of further down or you kind of had like an emotional response? I, girl, it was crazy. I had like a panic attack during it. So <sighs> yeah, it was hard to say because I was just snort crying the first like five minutes. <laughs> It was like, I'm glad I did it, but it was not a fun experience. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, Kimmy and I are like totally like the people that we probably like wouldn't recommend to do it this way. I did mine when I was 17 weeks pregnant because I was so worried about my delivery and my pelvic floor that mm -hmm. I actually got mine released when I was pregnant because I like, you know, <laughs> wanted to have like a solid, you know, delivery. And um, I had a really pretty non traumatic birth and not a lot of trauma. Um, so, and I have no idea why, you know seven pound baby, super great, you know, delivery midwife, or maybe my tongue tie release too. Who knows? So <laughs> yeah, but, it could have been that too. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been all of it, but yeah, that's, that story is always funny to me because the only, I was nauseous my entire pregnancy, but the only time I actually threw up was like the four days I like spent down in LA with Dr. Zaghi and like, oh, it was brutal. And like, I threw up like a few hours after my release and I was like, Ouch. my sutures. <laughs> I was like, yeah. instantly, I'm like counting them. I'm like, okay, they're all there. They're all there. But yeah. And it's like, as soon as I got home, I was, I was fine again. So, you know, I don't know that I would recommend it, but you know, I did it. So <laughs> plus you can't yeah. take the ibuprofen when you're pregnant. So that makes no. it fun too. Yeah. I did. I was able to take some Tylenol, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it really actually like, wasn't as bad as I like kind of worked up for, you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's almost like you work it up so much more in your head than right. when you actually like do it and finally get to the other side of it. You're like, Oh, actually that was okay. Not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm excited. And I also think for me, it's going to be super beneficial because my patients that may be averse to it or just don't mm -hmm. want to even look into it. I can tell them about my journey. Yeah. And I think that yeah. that yeah. would be helpful. So yeah, so yeah, there's value to, in so many ways for this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of things that some people they don't even realize that there's a problem until they like have their release. And they're like, apparently, I had a lot of clenching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> or yeah. my headaches are gone. I kind of forgot I had headaches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or well, I didn't know how much better I could actually sleep like, and probably with your patients too, they were so pain forward. They don't even know what it's like to not be in pain or not have that anymore. And so, you know, when you get there, you're kind of like, wait, what just happened? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I delivered a, a nighttime orthotic. I didn't even get to the daytime one yet. And, she, and the patient came back. She said, I feel amazing. She was like, this Aww. is amazing. Like I've had migraine after migraine, after migraine, waking uh, up with them. I don't even want to get out of bed. I'm in the worst mood and not a single headache. She's like, I feel amazing. And that's not always the response. Like that's not right. how it goes for right. every patient, right? With TMJ work, it can get like a little worse before it gets better. Or we can have like five huge steps forward and then like three steps back. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but with her, it was just instant. And you get a few of those, you know, every now and then it's amazing. Mm -hmm. But she's, so, she's just feeling great. So yeah, yeah. Cause it is, it is the journey, right. That we were kind of talking about of the muscle repatterning and the things we've been doing yes. for so long and yes. over and over and over again, like yeah. it can take time. It took time to get there. And then, you know, now it's taken time to undo what we've done to ourselves. So, um, could you, would you be willing to show us maybe a little exercise yeah. or a little release that our patients could try or people could try at home? Yes. Yes. So let's do the lateral pterygoid because that's a fun one. So Ooh, the, yeah. lateral, <laughs> the lateral pterygoid is just a tiny little muscle that is about the size of the end of my pinky. But when this muscle goes into spasm, it can wreak havoc. It can cause mm -hmm. pain behind the eye, pain referred into the ear, jaw pain, headaches, so many things. And it also attaches to the little articular disc inside of our jaw joints. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very... Um, important muscle in my work and for many people because it can cause so much dysfunction. So when that muscle contracts really hard, it could potentially even pull that disc out of alignment, click, pop, click, pop, or completely out of alignment to where the jaw locks. And so just releasing this muscle. So I have video, a few videos about this on YouTube, I believe, on how to release this muscle on my TikTok, Instagram, whatever it may be. And I had one person tell me that when she, she would do it a few times a day along with some of my other releases. And she said that her jaw actually unlocked and she's in so much less pain. Wow. Now that is, that is not common. Usually more 
has to be done, but it's neat hearing that that worked for her. Mm -hmm. So to release this muscle, it's kind of hard to reach and not everybody can reach it on themselves. Mm. (laughs) Um, It's and and there are many people that don't even think you can reach this muscle. And there are people that think you can't. So let's just say we believe you can't reach it. So what are we even doing here? Right? But you can influence the the fascia and the tissue around it Mm. enough to loosen it up and 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 make things feel better. So Mm. let's leave it at that. So what you're going to do is if we're releasing on one side, we use the opposite side pinky and we actually turn it so that the nail is facing inside the mouth and the pad of your finger is facing outside. So then what you're going to do is you're going to go in your mouth, um, way to the back, as far back as you can go between your top teeth on that side and your cheek. Yeah, as far back and up as you can go. And so we all open our mouths to put it in there. As soon as you get as far back and as far up as you can, close about halfway. And you're going to find you can get even further back. Mm -hmm. We go all the way back there. Once you get to that spot, you'll probably know because it hurts. You're just Mm going to keep going (laughs) as far back and as far up as you can. And depending on your facial structure, the length of your pinky, et cetera, not everyone can reach this. That's the tricky part. But once you're there, what you're going to do is apply some pressure up and back for about 10 to 15 seconds, then change the angle of your pinky and do it again. And you can do that three or four times. Then you just take your finger out and you're sort of done. And you can do that on both sides. I wouldn't recommend doing it more than like once, maybe twice a day, because that muscle can be pretty angry. So it's not a pleasant thing to release that muscle, but it can help so much. So I'll kind of demonstrate too. Oh yeah. (laughs) Uh Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely feel it. Yeah, I can feel it too. So I was definitely doing some clenching last night. I can feel that. (laughs) So Priya, is it like if you were to imagine your cheekbone here, like you're trying to reach up Mm -hmm. in that area? Uh, right up in there is where you're reaching. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right there. So it's way back there. Way up. Mm-hmm. But I definitely know that we can influence it because there are patients that come in and they're like locked. They can barely open like your tuck. Mm. And then once I release that muscle, they can open and mm. I hear an audible click. So that just mm-hmm. got back in alignment. So So I know we can influence it, whether, you know, and and I've had this debate with dental practitioners, if you can't tell, so I don't (laughs) want to get into that. If you don't think you can reach it, I don't want to hear it. (laughs) You can influence it, I believe. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's perfect. And what was this one you were just doing? That looked great. That one one feels really good. Unlike the lateral pterygoid, that's the masseter one. So um, you're going to take your middle knuckles, these guys here and go right underneath your cheekbone. So you can feel your cheekbone pretty clearly. Just go right mm-hmm. underneath. You got it. Yeah, right there. Go right underneath both sides. So you want to do both at the same time. You want to gently tap your teeth together in the back. So you want some support for your jaw. Then mm-hmm. you press inwards with as much pressure as you can handle. And most people like a lot of pressure with this because mm-hmm. it feels good. And then with that pressure, go all the way down to the angle of your jaw and like the bottom border here. That's where that muscle attaches. And this one just feels so good. Yeah, it feels good. Just, yeah, a lot of us have trigger points or tense areas in this muscle. Mm-hmm. And just releasing that. And this one you can do like three or four times, three or four times a day. Mm-hmm. And that one people just love. So, yeah. yeah. So that's the uh, good masseter release. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you so I much. It. Awesome. I love it. Mm-hmm. So if people do want to find more videos, they want to find you more, they want to dive in a little bit further where can they find you online i know you said you have youtube tiktok instagram how can they find you yeah all of those so if you just type in uh the tmj doc or um a lot of my handles are the underscore tmj underscore doc Mm. or my name priam is three you should be able to find me on all of those um all of those different ones like youtube uh tiktok instagram they're such different platforms. So I've tried to cater to what the people that watch them want. So my YouTube videos, I would say are like nicely crafted. I speak slowly. There's a lot of information. They're longer. Most of them are longer than eight or nine minutes. Mm -hmm. TikTok is quick. People want information quickly. So I try to deliver it quickly. And then Instagram is sort of like a good in between, but it's a lot of images, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I seem like a 
different personality in every single one. I'm, I don't have multiple personalities and it's okay if you do, but I don't, I'm just <laughs> trying to cater to the audience and get yeah. the information across. Yeah. Which is perfect. It's nice. It's nice to kind of see that, like, you know, like the difference be- between that. So, and if people want to find you in your practice and actually come, come see in person, where would they find that? What's your website? Yeah, that's www.tmjdentaldoc.com. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. I, love I also it. do Zoom meetings, so you can oh, find all know. the information for that as well on my website. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on Priya. You're Thank a you powerhouse. <laughs> powerhouse you. Priya. Powerhouse Priya. I like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a good You're day. You're so welcome. You too.